I've received so many questions from you all asking, what do I do if I have children with a narcissist and how do I protect my kids from the narcissist? Well, today I'm going to share five life-saving tips on how you can raise your children while dealing with a narcissist, whether you're still living together or co-parenting after separation. Now, first, before we get into it, for those of you who are new to my channel, welcome. I'm Shanine Megji. Welcome to my channel on toxicity is not your destiny. I create these videos to help you navigate toxic relationships in your life from a biblical, practical, and spiritual perspective. So before we dive in, I want to emphasize that the tips I'm about to share are grounded in common themes. One major theme is teaching your children that they are not responsible for another person's emotions or behavior. Another is modeling for your children that unacceptable behavior is never okay, no matter the excuse. In my work, I often interact with adults who are raised by at least one narcissist and these tips come directly from the insights and experiences that they have shared. I think you will find them most helpful. So let's get right into it. Tip number one, do not make excuses for the narcissistic spouse. If you've spent any amount of time with a narcissist, you probably know how tempting it can be to find explanations for their confusing and unacceptable behavior. But when the narcissist acts out, whether it's making threats, throwing tantrums, or yelling, there are no excuses for that behavior. And when you make excuses like saying, dad's just stressed from work, or mom is upset because of a disagreement, you inadvertently justify their actions. This sends the wrong message to your children. It implies that it's acceptable for adults to lash out and terrorize others when they're under stress or upset. By doing so, you deflect responsibility away from the narcissist and subtly suggest that others, including your children, might somehow be to blame for the narcissist's outbursts. I know this might be hard, as the spouse of a narcissist, you probably already take the brunt of the rage and the manipulation of the narcissist. Naturally, you want to shield your children from the chaos and the tension. But the best thing to do when you talk to your kids is just reassure them that they're not responsible for their parents' behavior. And that unacceptable behavior is just that. It's unacceptable. It's never okay. Period. Tip number two. Don't push your children to over-apologize. One of the heartbreaking signs of abuse in children is when they start over-apologizing. They feel like they constantly have to apologize for things that aren't their fault just to keep the peace with the narcissistic parent. This behavior often stems from trying to keep the peace with a narcissistic parent who may expect constant apologies and praise to feel validated. Living with an abuser can make children believe that taking the blame for their parents' actions will somehow make the relationship better, at least temporarily. But in reality, it only perpetuates a harmful cycle. When children constantly apologize, this unintentionally reinforces the idea that the narcissistic behavior is justified. It also teaches them that their worth is tied to how much they can please their parent who isn't fair or healthy and can actually lead the child into other later on harmful codependent relationships. Instead of encouraging this pattern of over apologizing, it's important to help your children understand that they're not responsible for their parents' outbursts or moods. They shouldn't have to apologize excessively just to avoid conflict. Genuine apologies should come from recognizing their own mistakes, not from trying to soothe someone else's unreasonable demands. By teaching this to your children, you're helping them to build strong self-esteem and healthy boundaries. They need to know that their value isn't based on constantly seeking approval or trying to fix things that aren't their fault. It's about respecting themselves and understanding that they are God's precious children and deserve to be valued and cherished just as Jesus loves them. 
Now, on a little side note, if you're in a season of transition right now, maybe you have separated or a significant relationship has ended and you're rebuilding all or parts of your life, check out a free training I put together on how to navigate a difficult life transition. I have included a link in the description box below. Let's move on to tip number three, counteract gaslighting with validation. If you have children with a narcissist, you are almost without a doubt deeply acquainted with the crazy making effects of gaslighting. Gaslighting is a form of manipulation where the narcissist distorts reality and presents it to you in a way where they will not be challenged or told otherwise, often to the point of making you feel ashamed for not buying into their distorted reality and to the point where you question your own perceptions and sanity. Gaslighting can leave you, an adult, feeling incredibly frustrated, at a loss for words, confused, and questioning yourself. Your children are even more vulnerable to gaslighting. It can be so destructive to their developing brains. While you may be able to assert reality and consult your long-term memories to verify that you indeed are sane, your children don't have those cognitive tools. Gaslighting destroys your children's sense of reality. They don't have the logic to see through the confusion that narcissists create. When you stand by while the narcissist gaslights, it sends a powerful message to your child that the narcissist's version of reality is correct. It validates their manipulation and chips away at your child's confidence in their own understanding of truth. It's crucial to counteract this by validating your child's experiences and emotions and helping them hold on to their sense of what's real and what isn't, despite the confusion and the chaos that the narcissist creates. I recall speaking with a child who grew up around constant gaslighting. They shared with me how there were many nights when they would cry and cry, praying and pleading for someone, anyone, just to tell them something that was true. At that time, the child didn't know the term for gaslighting, but they did know that the world seemed to be falling apart around them. This child was so desperate for a grasp on reality that they took comfort in stating obvious facts. Statements like, the sky is up, the grass is green, were the child's way of trying to protect their sanity. So how do you give your child a grasp on reality? Validate your kids. I don't mean that you tell them that they're always right. I mean that you corroborate the reality that they are experiencing. If you see your child being gaslit, mistreated, or scapegoated, acknowledge the pain that they have gone through. You can tell them, I'm sorry. That must have really hurt. I can totally understand if you are furious right now. When you validate your children's experiences in the face of gaslighting, you empower them to trust their own reality and emotions. It's about acknowledging their pain and confusion without dismissing or minimizing it. This validation helps them anchor themselves in what's true and builds their resilience against the manipulation tactics of the narcissist. Number four, the fourth tip. Encourage independence. The whole point of parenting is to raise kids who eventually don't need us anymore. But let's face it, abusers often thrive on keeping their families under their thumb. Narcissistic parents can seem distant and yet control every aspect of their children's lives. Growing up in such a controlling environment where you feel like you're walking on eggshells can really stifle your child's ability to become their own person. So here's what you can do. Empower your kids. Encourage them to explore hobbies. Maybe even get a part-time job to earn their own money. And definitely support them in making friends. And don't hold back on helping them get that driver's license when they're ready. Don't delay on that. By giving your child the freedom to be independent, you're setting them up for success down the road. As they discover their passions and preferences, they'll start to form a solid sense of self. And here's the key. If they can develop an identity that isn't tied to seeking approval from their parents, they'll likely steer clear of those codependent relationships later on in life. It's important to promote their critical thinking skills too, encourage them to voice their own opinions and make decisions. Unlike a narcissistic parent, show genuine respect for their independence as individuals. 
Your support and respect will embolden them to embrace their uniqueness, even when they face criticism or belittling from the other parent. It can go a long, long ways. Number five, your healing journey is a gift to your children. As you journey through healing, it's crucial to remember what conversations are appropriate for your children. While honesty is important, not all the details should be shared with them, especially the heavier ones. Topics like explicit details of abuse, legal battles, financial struggles, or intense emotional burdens can overwhelm and confuse young minds. These are burdens that they're not equipped to carry, and discussing them is inappropriate and places undue stress on their shoulders. If you need to share, find other trusted adults that you can process and share with, perhaps other family members or friends or counselors or coaches. Focus on creating a safe space where your children can come to you for comfort and truth without feeling burdened by adult concerns. While the narcissist in your life created an environment of fear, stress, and instability, make an effort to cultivate peace and stability in your home, even if you don't feel that way. God himself can give you the grace if you reach out to him, and he promises to leave his peace with us. By shielding your children from unnecessary details and involving them in age-appropriate discussions, you empower them to navigate their own emotions and experiences more effectively. This approach not only protects their innocence, but also strengthens their trust in your ability to guide them through difficult times. Another huge thing to remember is that your healing journey is a profound gift to your children. It shows them resilience in action, how to overcome adversity, how to find God's purpose amidst the pain and the trial, and how to rebuild a life filled with hope and God's purpose. Remember, your healing is a beacon of hope for your children. It teaches them that healing is possible even in the face of adversity, and equips them with the strength to overcome challenges they might face in their own life. Even if you don't say much, or your children may not want you to preach at them, or they don't feel like processing with you, or you being the person they confide in, how you walk out and overcome your own trials and your own struggles is something that they are paying attention to, whether you realize it or not. And this is where you can have the most influence. So I hope these five tips were helpful. Dealing with co-parenting alongside a narcissist or abusive spouse is not for the faint of heart. It can be incredibly challenging, especially when their influence seems to counteract your efforts in instilling values and preparing your children for their future. But take heart. Your commitment to protecting, validating, and empowering your children is truly priceless. Your ongoing dedication and healing journey are shaping a future filled with hope and resilience for your family, even the generations that follow. None of your investment on yourself and healing journey goes to waste, but actually can save lives of your children and their children. If you would like me to do a video on more insights on co-parenting with a narcissist, please let me know in the comments below. I do have many more tips to share, so if you'd like to hear them, please say so. And if you'd like to check out my video on how to navigate a difficult transition, click the link in the description box below. If you'd like to receive more content from me, don't forget to subscribe and click the bell. And this brings me to the end of my video. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.